Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Zills Lab, Zills 4 tutorial series. Today, we're going to learn all about envelopes. If you're enjoying this series and you'd like to support my channel, check out the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below. Fabulous way to do that. The term envelope is a little bit abstract. It's sometimes a bit difficult to grasp exactly what's going on. The easiest way to think about it is an envelope is a shape and the shape that gets drawn describes a modulation pattern a change of state over time. If you consider time to be the x-axis and the amount of change to be the y-axis, this, this shape that we can draw, and you could draw literally any complex shape that you wanted, will describe that change of modulation over time. So when applied to a key, we have a period of time after the key's been pressed when it gets louder, and then we might have a constant volume, and then the, the volume might descend to a, to a stable shelf. And then when we let the key go, the sound might fade away naturally. That's an envelope. In that case, it's a pretty simple shape that describes the modulation or change of amplitude or volume over time. Now the Zills 4 has two different kinds of envelopes available to it. It has ADSR envelopes and envelope shapers. We'll deal with each of those in turn and I'll define and describe all of this stuff as we go along. As you can see in the top bar, I've dialed up my OneOSC preset. I've described in a previous episode how to build this preset, but literally any preset that gives you a single oscillator with a really simple sound is gonna suffice for today's purposes. So when I press a key, we hear this simple sine wave. When I let the key go, the sound fades away pretty quickly, but not instantly. That was an ADSR envelope being applied to the volume there. Attack, decay, sustain, and release. Let's have a look at each of those concepts in turn. Firstly, attack. Now in this particular case, when I press the key, the sound reaches maximum volume almost instantly. Now say almost instantly, there is actually a tiny attack phase here. We have a look at the attack knob on the envelope ADSR. You can see it's set to 0.6 milliseconds, pretty much unnoticeable. If I make this much longer, 400 milliseconds, now there's gonna be a noticeable increase in volume for the first half a second, 400 milliseconds. That's the attack phase. Now, did you notice something odd that happened after uh, the attack phase was completed? After it reached maximum volume, it suddenly dropped down to a lower shelf. The lower shelf is described by the sustain knob. So I'll do the same thing again. I'll press the key, goes up, drops down suddenly and hits this shelf. This shelf is the sustain level. And if I turn the sustain knob, you can hear the sound get louder and quieter. The speed at which we drop to that shelf is the decay phase. So after we've been through the attack phase and we get as loud as we possibly can, we then come back from that maximum volume over this period of time down to the sustain level. So I'll set my sustain level quite low and then set a longer decay. So now we're gonna get louder, softer, and then we come down to the shelf, make the decay even longer, make it really noticeable. Louder, softer, shelf. And that shelf is gonna stick there for as long as I have the key pressed down. That's our sustain phase. When I let the key go, going to enter the release phase and the sound will fade fade away according to the length of time specified by this knob so let's give ourselves a nice long release up down sustain shelf I'm gonna let the key go now and then we fade away here's our release phase it says 2.8 seconds that's taking longer than 2.8 seconds there must be some sort of multiplier in the background. If I pull this release knob back, you can hear that it dynamically adjusts. Now that's the ADSR envelope itself described, but there are another couple of features that we need to talk about before we move on to have a look at the other envelope type. The first is that the overall impact that the envelope can have on the output volume of the synthesizer is also controllable. The signal level knob at the bottom of the uh, the envelope section. It's currently set to maximum. That means that this envelope is working as hard as it can. It's, it's basically executing the maximum amount of modulation that it can. So here we go up, we come to a, a, a volume that's basically maxing out on the oscilloscope. Here we go. And then it comes back down to a shelf 
which is about a third of the height of the oscilloscope. It doesn't particularly matter how many decibels, how loud it is. Everything is relative. What I'm going to do now is turn the signal control down. And now the envelope is only going to operate at 70% of its maximum capacity. The up modulation and the down modulation, everything, all of those levels, all of those control voltage values that are described by this envelope, they're all going to be reduced by 70%, and that means it's going to be quieter. Here we go. So we didn't get up to the top, and when we settle out, we're now, what, maybe a fifth of the total height of the oscillator, uh, of the oscilloscope. In other words, we've trimmed 30% off the maximum amplitude that the synth can output. There's another feature of the synth that we also need to be aware of. In the keyboard mapping, a section that we've only briefly touched on in the introductory video, I described that the, the keyboard on pin was the means by which we tell the keyboard to do something, the synthesizers to do something when we press a key. So this is the thing that's allowing us to respond to these keyboard triggers. Now for ADSR envelopes, the keyboard on pin is effectively redundant. I'm going to take it away and the synthesizer is going to carry on acting exactly as it did previously. That's because the ADSR envelope has a gate and it's the gate that we're actually hanging off in order to generate these tones. If I disable the gate, you're going to get no sound whatsoever. The keys aren't triggering the firing of the envelope. If you, if you imagine the envelope needs to be triggered, it needs to be instantiated, instructed to do something in order for us to actually hear any sound because it's the envelope that describes the volume change. And now we've got no trigger instructing the envelope to do anything. So it's very subtle, but these two different controls do actually have different function. If I engage just keyboard on, now we're still going to respond to those key commands, but we no longer have a gate and it's the gate that allows us to describe a sustain phase. If you don't have a gate, if you're not holding that gate open, because imagine a trigger is an instantaneous thing an instruction that happens momentarily in time and then it's gone that's a trigger but a gate is a thing that has effectively a trigger at the beginning and then stays open for a period of time controlled by you controlled by you holding that key down now that we don't have a gate we don't have a sustain period so now i'm going to press a key and hold it down that's the attack and the decay phase that you're hearing i'm holding the key down and we have no sustain phase Going to make the attack, the decay, and the release all very short. It's too short. We can't even hear it now. The envelope is firing so fast. There we go. That we basically weren't even registering that there was a sound happening. So it doesn't matter how long I hold the key down. Every single key press really fast. I'll, I'll press the key as quickly as I can. It's going to sound exactly the same as holding it down for as long as I like. So the moment you instruct the keyboard to do something, it sends that signal, that instruction to the envelope. The envelope describes its entire shape, the whole attack, decay and release phase, but it skips over sustain. If we swap these two pins over and we just have a gate instead, now we have the entire envelope again. In other words, the keyboard on pin is essentially redundant because the gate's doing the same job but if you want to disable the sustain period of the ADSR envelope, then you can accomplish it by having the keyboard on pin set and the gate pin turned off. Let's reactivate the gate and bring us back into full ADSR mode. There's something else to talk about as well, though. I'm going to give myself reasonably long attack decay. Don't particularly care about the release. So I want to go up and down, hit the shelf, and then when I let the key go, it stops. Now, instead of mapping that envelope to the volume, we have a dedicated signal knob that, that's hardwired directly into the VCA. You can see it says VCA signal level, it stands for voltage controlled amplifier. So this envelope is hardwired behind the scenes. The only hardwired connection in the synthesizer goes directly to the amplifier. And this envelope, the main primary envelope is patched directly into the audio output. But that envelope shape is also capable of being routed 
wherever else we want. And in order to do those extra patchings, we use the trapezoid control. Let's have a look in the matrix. And you can see that we've got a dedicated patch bay for the trapezoid. So anything that the trapezoid connects to is going to be modulated by the shape of this envelope. Now we've got a hangover pin over here. I'm just gonna throw that away so that it doesn't confuse us. What I'm actually going to do is patch the trapezoid envelope into oscillator one frequency. Now this is gonna be pretty violent. It's gonna be a very dramatic sweep in pitch up and then back down. Here we go. Very, very high pitch modulation indeed. That's because the trapezoid control is currently set to maximum. So the control voltages that this envelope is outputting patched into the oscillator one frequency, which is the sound that we're hearing, it's having that exactly the same shape as we were previously, and actually we're still having that, that impact on the volume. The amplifier is taking care of itself and is unaffected by our trapezoid control, but now we've got a secondary mechanism to patch this envelope in anywhere we want. If I pull the trapezoid control down, we're not gonna do anything to the volume. The volumes are gonna to continue to be exactly the same as they were previously, but we're gonna have a smaller pitch variance. So I'll pull this down to about 10 o'clock. And each time I change this control, you can hear that the, the amount of voltage, the amount of control that's being fed into the oscillator one frequency control to say, increase your pitch and then decrease it again, and then hold it static at this new level that's higher than the key that I'm pressing. I'm pressing a C, I'll do it again. After I, I'm holding the key down now, and as you can see, we're describing a note 274 Hertz. Turn the trapezoid all the way down so the envelope's no longer having any impact on the pitch. The native pitch of the key is 261 hertz. And here is the envelope being reimposed. And at the moment, we're just hearing the sustain level. I have to press a new key for us to go through the attack and decay phase again. Okay, so that's the ADSR envelope. I'm gonna click on the label where it says envelope ADSR. Now we've switched to envelope shaper mode. So this is the native envelope mode that the original synthesizer had, the, uh, the VCS4. And it's similar in many respects to the ADSR envelope. One of the things that you'll notice straight away is that there's no sustain phase anymore. In other words, there's no gate. It doesn't matter whether or not we have the gate pin engaged in the keyboard matrix. For ADSR envelopes, the keyboard gate is the most important pin. That's the one that primarily describes what you want to do with the envelope. For envelope shaper mode, it has no purpose. The keyboard on gate is the only one that we're interested in because there is no gate. Now I'm holding this key down. So something very odd is happening there. The other primary difference between the ADSR envelope and the envelope shaper is the envelope shaper has an internal loop mechanism. In other words, every time the envelope has fully described its shape, it's capable of going back to the beginning and doing it again. So let's start there. We'll start at the, start at the end of this control list. The control with the label off above it describes the, the amount of time in between repetitions of the envelope. So at the moment, it's set to 65 milliseconds. So after this envelope has completed, there's gonna be a period of 65 milliseconds where nothing happens. And then without us pressing a new key or doing any performing any other instruction, the envelope will start again and we'll get a new amplitude envelope. Let's make the period longer. 340 milliseconds. There's the envelope. And now that rest, that period of time in between each loop getting longer. Now we're at half a second. And as we turn this knob clockwise, we approach infinity. And if the knob is actually at its maximum, it switches to no looping millisecond. Now it's a single simple envelope. Holding the key down and it's not going to do any repeats. So it's pretty unusual to have an envelope with a native built-in looping mechanism, what this one does. 
and it's controlled via the off knob. Let's have a look at the shape that's described by the envelope itself. And we have attack and decay, and they perform exactly the same functions as they do with the ADSR envelope. So the attack phase is how long it takes to get to maximum volume. The decay phase is how long it takes to come back from that maximum volume. And now in between, instead of there being a sustain phase controllable by, controllable by us via the, the keyboard gate, we have an on knob. This is how long the control voltage will stick at maximum. In other words, it's like a, a pseudo sustain, but it's of fixed duration. So if I make it zero, we'll go straight up and then back down again. Whereas if we have a period of time in between where we stick at a shelf, we'll go up, we'll stick there, and then we'll come back down. Don't need that pitch variance anymore. I'll remove it. So just disengage the trapezoid pin. So the envelope shaper is still doing its thing on amplitude, getting louder and quieter and then disappearing to zero, but it's no longer having any effect on any other aspect of the synthesizer because the trapezoid pin isn't connected to any modulation destination. In other words, this knob isn't doing anything anymore. Okay, so that's the primary envelope described. And as you can see, the left and right synthesizers in this thing, they're pretty much identical. So even though everything that I'm describing is to do with the, the left synth, we do have exactly the same functionality on the right-hand synth. But there are also a couple of shared envelopes that are across the entire instrument, in other words, the synth pair, and they're called envelopes one and two. On the right-hand module, which we've hardly even touched yet, we have these various tabs. And on the envelope slash LFO tab, we've got two shapers, sub stands for supplemental. So these are supplemental envelopes that can be used as extra modulation sources for other routing mechanisms. Let's say for instance, you're happy with your envelope shape for amplitude sounding like this. And that's exactly what you want it to sound like. And you don't want to have to mess with any of those controls, but you want to apply a little bit of pitch modulation as well, simply not using the same envelope shape. Well, we'll use supplemental one instead. Now, the first thing that you need to do in order to use these envelopes is connect them to the keyboard. Let's go back into the keyboard section they have their own pins. So I need to connect either the keyboard on if I'm just dealing with envelope shapers or the gate if I'm dealing with ADSR envelopes. I need to connect those pins. Envelope one is now active and available for use. Envelope two isn't. Now at the moment, neither of them are doing anything. All I've done at the moment is enable them. Every time I press a key on the keyboard, envelope one, uh, supplemental envelope one is going to do something it's just not currently connected to, to anything. So there's gonna be no result from that work. Let's patch it into something. And for this, we use the advanced matrix. Here's envelope one and two down at the bottom of the advanced matrix. And for the sake of simplicity, the same example, I'll patch it to oscillator one frequency. So now envelope one is gonna take over control of that pitch modulation that previously the primary envelope was doing Close the matrix down. Let's increase some attack. There we go. And we still have a level control. So this is basically the equivalent of the trapezoid control in the primary envelope. Now we're just changing the level of whatever we happen to be patched to. Well, our modulation destination is the oscillator one frequency. And now you can hear as I pull this level control down, it gets much more subtle. If I engage looping, make the envelope a bit faster. Now we've got lots of little oscillator modulations. This is why for the most part, you'll see me use the ADSR envelope for the purpose of examples, because I'm pressing the key down, but I don't have time to basically describe what's happening before it fades away. In other words, there's no gate. If I switch back to ADSR mode, now I can hold the key down and we're gonna have this sustain shelf over which I can talk. So here's envelope one 
doing those little, there's a little bit of an attack phase and then a decay phase as well. I take the attack phase away completely. We have a sawtooth. Sawtooth modulation being applied to the oscillator frequency. Nothing to do with the original ADSR envelope, which is describing uh, volume change. And I had release set to maximum there, so the note was going to basically last forever. Just to prove that this keyboard matrix matters, I'll patch exactly the same controls into envelope two. So envelopes one and two are identical. Turn envelope one off. There's no pitch modulation there at all because it's not been patched in. Let's engage envelope two. And there's the modulation. And that's us done for envelopes. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit like. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks very much.